Welcome back to another Taker video. My name is Josh and today we're going right back to the basics and we're talking about the home app. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the home app and how you can control all of your different lights and accessories in your home and how you can go about expanding your home with smart devices using some really cool apps which I found over the last year. I'll be going through the very basics of HomeKit and all the things you need to get started. So if building a smart home is something you are definitely interested in doing, then please hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and share this video as it really does help our channel grow. And hit that bell icon so you never miss another tech up video ever again. Let's get to the video. So if you're totally new to smart home and you're totally new to HomeKit, then HomeKit is basically what Apple provides for you to create a smart home. It allows you to add accessories to the home app which is built into iOS and control those devices through a hub such as a HomePod mini, an Apple TV or an iPad. On Apple's website, if you go to the TV and home section, you'll find some really great information on how you can get started with the home app and it will have a really good tab at the top as well so you can go and check out all the home kit accessories that you can buy depending on the category that you want to build with your smart home as you can see there is a lot of accessories which you can choose from to get your home set up and make smart and there's an app which i will show you later which will really help in the building process when looking for accessories make sure they have this logo on it this means it's going to work natively with HomeKit and the setup process is going to be very simple and it's going to allow you to have multiple devices within the home app speaking of let's jump to it now the home app is built right into ios and i highly recommend you go onto the latest software so you get all of the best updates from HomeKit and apple but this is a home app and as you can see, you can see all of my different accessories. At the top of the app, you are going to get your status bar, which is going to show the state of all of your accessories within your home. Underneath is your scenes. If you're on the home tab, it's going to be all of your favorite. And below is all of my different devices ready for me to control. On the left, I have all of my rooms and some settings which I can pop into as well. Speaking of, pressing that little home icon at the top allows you to get access to your home settings. If you've got multiple homes, you can also switch between them here, but for this case scenario, we're gonna go into our home and look at our settings. Right off the bat, you can see who is included within the home, meaning who has got access to control it, and below you'll see all of your different accessories, such as windows, cameras, doors, and etc. Clicking on a person's profile will allow you to customize their control, how they can play their music, if they're allowed explicit content, and if they're allowed to remotely control stuff and have viewings to your camera recordings, which we'll get into it a little bit later. If you have HomePods in the home, you can also set up personal request and voice recognition, allowing you to ask for your different notifications depending on who is speaking to the HomePod. In the settings, you can also see your hubs, which connect different devices, and set up your network setting to allow people to connect to your speakers and TVs within your home. Now for adding accessories. In the top left, there is a plus icon and it's going to give you a drop down menu and you're going to want to click add accessory. If your HomeKit product has a scan code, then you can scan this here. If it does not, then sometimes it will appear on the next page. And if not, then you can manually enter the code itself and connect it that way. There are a couple of different ways of devices connecting to your home, either via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, thread. So be mindful and make sure your device is compatible with your home network and you have your hub set up such as your HomePod or Apple TV. A quick tip, a lot of older devices use only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi bands, so make sure you can split your Wi-Fi router to two separate bands between 2.5 and 5 gigahertz as this really will help when setting up certain devices. Going into another room now, you can see where all of my devices have been separated and I can control them individually for each room. Each screen will have its own status bar, scenes and all of your accessories underneath including cameras ready for you to control. As you can see, I've split this up individually for each room and you can even customise the layout similar to the iOS home screen and place your icons where you want them to be. 
Controlling accessories is super easy by tapping on a tile. You'll be able to open up the menu of the color picker. It's gonna give you six different colors you can preset from. One is adaptive lighting and the rest are presets which you can change. You then have the slider which controls the brightness of the light and you can set this up either manually or with Siri control either on the iPad, iPhone, HomePod or Apple TV. If your bulbs support colour then you'll be able to have the option to have colour wheels which you can then choose from a bunch of different colours. You can also preset these and save these into scenes and you have a temperature gauge as well so you can set it between warm white and cool white if your bulb allows support for it. The top left colour is always going to be for adaptive lighting which allows for your bulbs to automatically change between their warm and cool whites during the day. This is a new feature that was recently added. Swiping up on the light you are going to be able to see all of the settings for that device. You can see if it's been grouped or if it is a singular device, you can add it to automations, see what scenes the light is added into, and you can even see if it's been connected via a bridge, which is going to connect it to your HomePod or your Apple TV. Also in the settings, you can delete and unpair a device so you don't have to go through a really long stage, it's just there for you to delete. To group lights, if you have multiple lights which you want to control under one tile, then all you have to do is go into one of those light settings and right at the bottom you're going to see an option saying group other accessories. From here you'll be able to name it and add the other lights you want in, giving you universal control over all of your accessories grouped into one tile. The home app allows you to also control any AirPlay devices such as Apple TV, HomePod minis, Sonos speakers and so on. Apple TVs and HomePods do have one up from this and give you volume controls and audio outputs and you can even use the remote built into your iOS device to control your Apple TV. If you have HomePod set up in your home as well, by swiping into the settings it's going to be able to show you all of your alarms which you've set up, all of your timers as well so if you want to add a new one or you want to see how long's left you can check in the home app. By swiping further down you'll be able to stereo pair HomePods if you have more than one, choose the left and right channels for those correct speakers, add the primary user, reduce bass if it is too loud and set up Siri how you would like it as well. You can individually also control personalised requests and have intercom and doorbell chimes set up individually for each HomePod. If you need help setting up your home hub such as Apple TV or HomePod, then I've got two separate videos reviewing those units which you can go and check out which I'll link at the top and in the description. At the bottom of your home page you are going to see all of your HomeKit cameras and you'll be able to access and view them really easily. As you can see I've got a couple set up here and in the top right corner of each of these panels you're going to see either a blue or red dot. Blue means that it's not recording but it's going to allow you to review that camera on its live feed and red means that it's recording on HomeKit Secure Video. HomeKit Secure Video is a subscription based service through iCloud starting at the 50 gigabyte tier which allows for you to have up to 10 days of access of your video footage if your camera supports HomeKit Secure Video. Depending on your subscription it will also mean the amount of cameras you're allowed. Starting at the base you're allowed one camera, if you go for the 200 gigabyte option it gives you 5 cameras and if you have the 2 terabyte option you can have unlimited access to HomeKit Secure Video on unlimited amount of cameras. Now going back to the status bar, we'll dive deeply into this. On your status bar, it's going to show the current state of all of your accessories within your home as long as you have them favorited. If they're favorited, they will show up on your main home page of the home app and you'll be able to control them, see what lights or accessories are on in each individual room and turn them all on or off with a press or if you want to turn them off individually, you can do by holding down and seeing the lights individually and then pressing each tile. The status bar will also update you with any information on your accessories such as a low battery, unresponsiveness or it's just gone completely dead. As you can see here my kitchen door contact sensor has gone dead as the battery percentage is zero and you can see if it's charging or if it needs a new battery. Also in the status bar it will show if any of your accessories or HomePods or Apple TVs need updating including third party devices and it will allow you to open that app and update your products. The scenes tab on the home page is very similar to the status bar by showing all of your favorited scenes from different rooms. 
By holding down on it, you'll be able to see what products are in that scene and you'll be able to test it to see if it's working and add new accessories or remove them as well. To get started with creating a scene, you want to click the same plus icon as you would to add an accessory. You can then name the scene, I'm going to name mine test, and then clicking on adding accessories, you can choose which lights you want to add into the scene. Scenes are really good for controlling multiple devices across your home, whether that's in just one room or multiple rooms throughout the day. For example, if you wake up at different times of the day and you don't want an automation, then you can make a scene with your selected lights to turn on, and then by saying the magic words and then the scene's name, this will control all of those accessories into the preset which you set when you built the scene. Moving on to automations, these are a little bit more advanced than scenes as they are based on different factors. These factors include time of day, temperature by using different sensors in your home, the people who are in your home, the state of an accessory that is already in use. There are so many different options you can choose, but one I would say to definitely get started with straight away is if you leave or arrive at your home to control your accessories automatically so you don't have to worry about leaving a light on or coming back to a dark home. So as you can see here, I've had my automation choose so when people leave, I can control my accessories. I have the option between if anyone leaves or the last person leaves. So if someone is still home, then this automation won't run. I can also select the time of day, whether it's day or night time, or if it's after or before sunrise. Then on the next page, I can add the accessories that I want. And by holding down on the tiles, I can select what the temperature I want them to be and the state I want them to do when this automation is triggered. So for example, when I leave home, I can have all of my lights turn off and I don't have to worry about them. This also works with door and motion sensors and even temperature sensors. So if you have smart heating, you can actually have it controlled via an automation. So for example, if my kitchen reaches 26 and a half degrees, then my heating will automatically turn off as that is way too warm for me and I don't want to be boiling anymore. So as you can see here, I can set this automation up to control the heating temperature based on the temperature in another room, which works really nicely. The home app is super easy to create basic automations in your home and I feel like anyone should be able to do this. If you are starting to go in a little bit more deeper, then you'll notice that the home app is quite limited though in terms of what the automations can do based on their triggers. But I will show you an app in a little while which will give you a lot more triggers for you allowed to run multiple different automations. Now one thing people always get about smart home is the fact you can have smart switches to control all of your accessories. If you have a HomeKit enabled smart switch in your home, then you can actually see it in the home app and set up the different presses so you can trigger different scenes or different lights all in one place. Now, if you're building a smart home, just one thing to keep in mind, there are two different types of switches you can get. Ones that replace your ordinary light switches and are wired into your circuitry, so be sure you know exactly what you're doing when setting those up. And then there's wireless ones, which you can basically place anywhere and add to your home and connect to your smart bulbs. If you're going down the wired route, then you don't need smart bulbs as the smart switch is what is controlling your lights. But if you want more automations and more possibilities, then I'd definitely say go for the wireless option as well, as this is going to be really good for automating and controlling your lights, and then find an alternative to getting rid of your old light switches. I did do a couple of videos on a bunch of different smart light switches you can get, so I'll be sure to link that in the top right corner and down below in the description as well. Now we've covered all of the basics with controlling your home via the home app. Now you need to get the products which is where this really cool app from this really cool developer I found within the HomeKit community comes from. This app is called Home Devices and it basically puts all of the HomeKit compatible devices into one app. It allows you to build wish lists of exactly what devices you want in your home. It will give you the link to where you can purchase them and it will even tell you if that device needs an external bridge to connect to your Apple HomeKit and how it connects to your home either via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 
Fred or Meta. This app is super amazing and really is helpful when looking to build your smart home. I have found so many new products via this app, it has been unbelievable and the developer has even built in a social aspect of it as well. So like me and many other of our HomeKit community, you'll be able to see regular posts when we post videos on YouTube or we post reviews onto our websites. It is all going to be there on the homepage so you can go and check that out and I'll leave the link for the app in the description. It is going to be super helpful if if you are starting to build your smart home or are looking to expand it with a bunch of different new products. Now, like I said earlier, the automations within the Home app can somewhat be limited. This is where I'm going to introduce the Home Plus app. Now, it can be a little bit expensive and it does sometimes go on sale, so keep an eye out for that. But this basically gives you a more in-depth view of your home and is basically the Home app on steroids. Making automations is a lot more intense on this app as it does give you a lot of different trigger options for you to create for your home. You can also then put all of your automations into different folders depending on the room or the category of that automation which I found super easy definitely when trying to automate my bathroom. I'm not going to go too in depth with this but it is super customizable and really intuitive for automations to be set up and gives you a lot more control than the native home app which is something I find really nice definitely if you're creating really large custom automations for your home. But for the basic level automation stuff, then I would say stick to the home app or see what you can get done in there first, learn from that, and then move on to the Home Plus app if you feel comfortable. This video was really nice to step back to the basics and just let you guys learn. This year is going to be a really fun year for smart home, so there are going to be a lot of new things coming out. And HomeKit is going to really drastically expand with all the new products that are going to come out with Meta. So I'm super excited for that. I hope you have learned a little bit from this video. If you are new to building your smart home or you're just about to start, it is an amazing journey and I, I wish you the best of luck. I hope this video has helped you in some way understand HomeKit a little bit better and how you'll be able to set up your devices and make the best smart home for yourself. Anyway, that is it for this week's video. I am going to link the apps down below so you can go and check those out and you can see from Home Devices and Home Plus, they're two really good apps to go and really start building your home and getting some ideas of what products you want in your home. So definitely go and check those out. They really did help me. And you'll also be able to get notified again from Home Devices of our posts and regular updates. So also stay tuned for that. That is an amazing app and it really does help our HomeKit community grow which is really nice if you guys definitely are learning from us. It's nice to be able to follow along and, you know, learn some new things. And even myself, I've learned so many things from our HomeKit community and I'm so grateful. But yeah, that is it for this week's video. If you did enjoy it, then please hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and share this video as it really does help our channel grow. Don't forget to hit that bell icon as it does notify you when TechUp posts another video and it's going to be really helpful if you did enjoy our content. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.